it. Some of those songs are so almost overwhelming when they start to touch you. <laughs> and with the titles today, Take Me Back to the Church, When I Feel the Struggle of Growing Pains, There Will Be a Day We Will Know the Purpose of the Pain. I mean, we get a whole message just from song titles. I love it. <laughs> Thank you, Father. I appreciate all you do for us. And I want to start with Happy Father's Day. You know, I kind of feel almost slighted as a mother for Mother's Day because not only do you guys get to be fathers, we got a bigger father. So, you know, nothing like following the trend of the Lord and being a father. That's a pretty big set of shoes to fill in, but it's an honor that goes with being a father. And it's just very touching for everybody to have that opportunity. We have our earthly fathers, grandfathers, and fathers that we claim is like a father that isn't even related. And then we have our Father in Heaven. So we are so grateful to have so many fathers that are there for us. Amen. And for those who miss out on not being there, it's time to get there because it's overwhelming gift that you've been given. <clears throat> Excuse me. And if you'd like to join us for service, you can find us at 227 West Main, West Fargo. You can always come in person. We'll be happy to help you. You can find us on YouTube, on our website, Twitter, Facebook. We're all over the place. <laughs> um, and then grace and peace to you from our from Father, our God. Hmm, let's try that again. Grace and peace to you from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Oh, thank you, Father, for the word you provide for us today as well. The prayer of tithing. Heavenly Father, thank you that you can satisfy our every desire and need. And when you start on that wish list, I wish I had this, 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 this. It's time to put on the brakes and appreciate what he's already given us and taking care of everything in our day and our life. I get carried away with that once in a while when I read this and it's like, okay, <laughs> I've been reminded. Your word says that we should give honor to you with the first fruits of our wealth. Accept our tithes and offerings as a gift of worship to you. Multiply what we give for the effective growth of your kingdom. May Christ dwell in our hearts through faith so that we, being rooted and grounded in love, may give the strength to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge. May we be filled with all the fullness of God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And then for Exodus 35.5. For what you have, take an offering for the Lord, everyone who is willing to bring to the Lord the offering of gold, silver, and bronze. It is not an order, a de command, demanded. It's a request from God for him to be able to replenish us hundreds of times more for what he does for us. And thank you, Father, for all that you supply for our church, you have taken care of us and giving to us and helping us share your gifts with others. And Father, thank you for the word. Please get it, help us get it deep in our being, deep in our soul, so that we know when we, you are in us and we need you, your word will be there for us, for us on an hourly, daily, second basis. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Have you ever had groaning and growing pains? <laughs> or any kind of pain? You know, there's just really not a way for us to not make noise when we're in real pain. Have you known anybody who cannot make noise when they're hurting? Well, everybody knows what I'm hurting. I will admit that. I am a big baby. I have a tolerance of pain very little. And those that have that high tolerance are really kind of all the whatever. But, you know, it's just not a fair gift. <laughs> Do you remember as a kid the growing pains that you had, like in your knees? Oh my gosh, it was like screaming. And friends were at the same time, and it's like, what's wrong? Well, these are growing pains. It doesn't make much sense. Your knees don't grow, but they do. 
every joint in your body can hurt when you're growing. And it's just so much fun. Eventually, you remember and going, oh, I got through it. You're not going to be stuck in it. We would really be a miserable bunch of people if we were never getting out of those pains. You know? But you hear your kids say it and the grandkids, oh, it hurts. What did I, what's wrong? It's growing pains, you know, and then every, just like when you were a kid and you looked at your parents with the same look they're giving you like, oh, <laughs> it doesn't make sense. We don't hear the crying of the plants and the trees and the flowers. We get to see the beauty that comes from it. And with us, when we get through the pains, we get the beauty that comes after it because that God is giving us the other side. But even our church has growing pains. And if we don't, then I'm doing something seriously wrong. I feel it's, it's my responsibility to make sure things are running smoothly and things are being done. Just yesterday, got the sound bar working. I was here Thursday and Friday and I'm good and get it to work because I wanted to play some songs on it in the computer. And it says, Bluetooth not connected. Click, click, click. I mean, I probably tried to wear the button out. Well, that's a growing pain for me because Carla and electronics are kind of not a good combination. <laughs> However, between Alan and Christina, they figured it out. So my growing pain subsided and we had it working. They had it working today. I just got the benefit of it. But there's going to be things in any and every situation. And our church is going to have more growing pains. That means only one thing. There's something better coming afterwards. And this kind of fits in, but it, the other day the Lord kind of spoke to me in a chastising way. So that's kind of like a growing pain when God says, <clears throat> we need to talk. Because people are asking me, well, how's your church doing? He says, it's doing really good. And then I made a fatal mistake. We're still small. He said, um, do you want to grow, basically? Shut your mouth. It's got to be claimed we're growing. And I'm sorry, I've kind of been putting us in a hamper because I keep saying, well, we're still kind of small, but no, we are big. You can't be around the world and be small anyway. And we are around the world with the child that we help, with the with monies that we give, with the message going out all over. So we are not small. We are big. We had been prophesied to a couple weeks ago, and I told you about it, and then I turned around and said, oh, yeah, we're small. Oh, my. So if you hear me say that, please. Remind me what God told me is to not say. We are a big church, and we're moving forward. We are so blessed in our lives, in our church, and in our families. Exodus 2, 23 and 24. During that long period, the king of Egypt died. The Israelites groaned in their slavery and cried out, and their cry for help because of their slavery went to God. God heard their groaning and remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. And again, the covenant is God's word. His bond, however you want to use that term, it's the guarantee that God gives when he gets a covenant. He always keeps his promises. And this is his way of having it in the Bible for us to remember. He keeps his word. He cried out. God, why God? Well, he hears that. When you're hurting from the heart and reaching out to them, him, he hears you. You don't really always hear anything back. You don't necessarily see it at the time. But he took care of it. He hasn't forgotten any of us. Doesn't say it's going to happen right away or early. But, you know, they were all removed from slavery. He had it taken care of. He said, okay, I hear you. My children, I hear you. Whether you know it or not, when you call out to God as a child of God, He hears everything you call out to. It doesn't seem like a big deal, but you know what? It hurts when you're hurt. You know, but He hears us. He's taking care of it. You gotta trust. But you're gonna have some pain. 
sometimes pain internally is so powerful and so strong you can't even breathe. It hurts so bad. But God is there. He hears you. He's holding you. Just like when our kids are little and they're crying so hard that, you know, they can't breathe either and it's just ripping your heart out. God's taking care of it. You just have to remember that. But you have to grow through it. The groaning and the growth go together. Tell God all about it. Give him everything he needs to hear. And he's working with you. If you don't tell him, you don't get it off your shoulders. It doesn't help you. I need to hold it in. That's why he says, come to me. Talk to me. Tell me. In Psalm 34, 18 and 19, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. As I was just saying, you hurt so deeply. You feel you're never going to get through it. The righteous, person may have, the righteous person may have many troubles, but the Lord delivers him from all. There it is. You hurt so bad. Some people really struggle in how to take care of it. Unfortunately, there are too many that do not have the Lord to help them through it, and they take the mortal sin. When you say goodbye with a gun, you don't have that second chance. It's done. But we have these things in our lives that hurt so deep, so God can help us. He can take us through it. And I apologize, I have to back up a step. I didn't write it down. Uh, next week, we're going to plan on having potluck. If you care to join us, please do. We're also going to do something else in the soon to be Sunday school room. I got some. Uh, neon paint that's the color of Play-Doh pretty much. There's six colors. We're going to paint their hands and have them put kids and those adults that want to do it too. We're going to paint our hands and put our prints all over the wall in the other room. And in a couple places we're going to have some Vaseline on the wall so we can have a little cross there too. So we've got the stuff to do it. And if you want to bring extra kids, whatever, so we can do that. I'm really excited. If I'm the only one putting my hands on the wall, so be it. But it's going to be all kinds of nice colors and things for the kids. And from there, we just keep growing. So, <clears throat> but I think next Sunday. Oh, okay. So you just can't say next week or not. Well, I assume since it's potluck Sunday. Sorry. Next Sunday, a week from today. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's got specifics, and we have ours at home. If I say next week, he, we have this difference of this week than next week. So, depending on the things. I'm right, of course, however. <laughs> the growing pains he goes through in life with her. <laughs> Psalm 147, verse 3. He heals up the brokenhearted, binds up their wounds. It's very clearly stated there what God does. You hurt, I fix. Again, it's not going to be right away, but it's not just one kind of pain. It's everything physically, emotionally, spiritually, financially. <coughs> Whatever is broken, God is going to fix. Reach out to him. God, I need your help. He takes care of it. But groaning and the pain, groaning and growing is really a painful thing. Too many people think it's just for like teenagers and kids, but it's not. It's for everybody throughout their whole life. You can't move ahead if you don't go through one thing or another. Driving in traffic, there's groaning in pain. <laughs> you know, some people can really be frustrating. <clears throat> and Lord, get me through this traffic before I say or do something foolish. Do not touch that horn. <laughs> do not touch that horn. But you know what? He gets you through it every time. Ezekiel 21, 6 through 8. Therefore, groan, son of man. We are told, let it out. 
Holding it in, as I said, does you no good. It just makes it worse. Grown before them with broken heart and bitter grief. And when they ask you, why are you groaning, you shall say, because the news that is coming, every heart will melt with fear and every hand will go limp. Every spirit will become faint and every leg will be wet with urine. It is coming. It will surely take place, declares the Sovereign Lord. The day is coming. We know it's coming. Be prepared for it. Things are going to go just lopsided for people. The others are going to get swooped up and taken to heaven. But you, sometimes, you know, we just groan in the morning because it's morning, because it's Monday, because I don't want to get out of bed. How many reasons do we make up for groaning just so we can basically whine about it? The real things that are deep in us are where the real groaning comes from. And when they start to come out, you got to work with it, take it out. And it can affect you in every possible way. Even the spirit may become faint, so you think it's still there. But you got pushed away because you're not doing what you need to be doing to take care of it. This is how we're made. We are made to have issues, have problems, have pain, to have God help us with it. That's what he wants us to do. He wants to take care of his children. When you reach out to him, he wants to take care of it. Again, you're not always going to feel it immediately, but I have no doubt that everybody here at one time or another has been in a place. You just feel so lost and hopeless. And then you reach out. And boom, God is there. And you feel it. And all of a sudden, things improve. Your life starts to change. He's like, I told you, here I am. Everybody has those. And it's just the world is lifted and you can go on. The doors are opening. Life is better. Everybody has to have one of those just to be told, for sure, because we as humans, we have our faith, but we still all need sometimes show me. In Matthew 4, 23 and through 25, Jesus went throughout Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness among them, among people. News about him spread all over Syria, and the people brought to him all who were ill with various diseases, those suffering severe pain, the demon possessed, those have seizures and were paralyzed. And he healed them. Large crowds from Galilee and the Decapolis, Jerusalem, Judea, and the region across the Jordan will follow him. Now, Jesus had to go through some groaning and pains. He went all over. He gave literally everything of himself that God gave him to give to others. Helping people in every possible way. There is not one instance that Jesus didn't have to deal with for people to see what they're going through, what had happened for them to get through it. They were all there to be healed, but they were also all there as witnesses. <laughs> and for these things to happen, you know, you have to watch it. You have to be part of it. He's showing his way. Follow me. I am your savior. I am your healer. Healer. I am your everything. Follow me. And you get to go to God. But you have to see to get through these things to get there. I mean, they didn't really have much for doctors then. If you were paralyzed, you know, they put needles at the bottom of your feet to see if you could feel anything. Sorry, I can't do anything about it. They had herbs and oils that helped with many things that are still known to be used today, the ancient healings. But now, the first thing everybody does is go to the medicine, go to the doctor. And the pain isn't any better. It's not helping. There's something wrong with me, but I, I got all these prescriptions. Anxiety, depression, uh, whatever 
there is, and all it does is make you a zombie. And it just lethargic. We have to go through to get to God. We have to use God to go through to get there. And yes, there are medicines for everything, but use God first as the doctor. Matthew 24, 4 8. Jesus answered, Watch out that no one deceives you. Now, when you get deceived, that's a growing pain too, because it hurts when you find out that, oh, that was so not right. So many will come in my name claiming, I am the Messiah, and I will deceive many. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars, and to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation, the kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All things, all these are the beginning of the birth pain. Birth pain, excuse me. Well, these birth pains have been going on for a long time. Fortunately, we don't know when. People would not deal with that well. But these are everything from two people, neighbors, cities, countries, and then the two biggest nations about it are heaven and hell. They are two different nations, but our heaven is the one that's righteous. Our heaven is the one that's going to win. Our heaven is the one that's waiting for people to accept Jesus to get home. And there are the pains and the growings that go with it, but we got to have People online or in line have to be on track. There's no other way to do it. The beginning of the birth pains is awful. The middle of the birth pains are even worse. The end is where you've gone through. You've done the groaning and the pain has gotten worse, but in the end, it's joyful. Remember at the beginning, it's a little uncomfortable. In the middle, it's really not close. And closer to the end, it's overpowering. But in the end, it's a welcoming smile. Romans 8, 22 through 26. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. Well, man, if you've ever been there with the mother of your child holding her hand when she has a contraction. You can have an idea because it's got you on your knees going, oh, oh this really hurts. Well, let's but afterwards, you have this beautiful child. And the growing pains, the birth pains are so gone. Not only so, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, grown inwardly as we eagerly await for the adoption to sonship, redemption of our bodies, help to be adopted by our Father, our Heavenly Father. One way to do it, one way to get to God. Too many people don't realize it. It's through His Son, Jesus, to be at a sonship, to be adopted by our God. Jesus, you're my savior. That has to be said. It has to be done. <clears throat> Not only so, but we ourselves, who have the first fruit of the Spirit, grown inwardly, so we are we wait eagerly for our adoption to sonship, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved. Right there. Making Jesus, we are saved. But hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what they already have? But if we hope for what we do not have yet, we wait patiently. It's kind of a brain teaser in a way, but you already have Jesus. You don't have to hope that he's going to be there for you. He's already in you. We hope for others that don't have Jesus get to find Jesus to be saved, to make sure where they go. And those of us that have the hope, that have Jesus, we're just patiently waiting for the day that heaven opens up and brings us all home. If we get there before that happens, 
we get to be up there patiently waiting to get to see everybody else. But we have to go through life. We're here for a reason, and we all have to suffer through one thing or another for a reason. God has every single life set up. He knows what we're going to do. We have the free will to make a mess of it, but he still knows we're going to do it. When you use the free will in the wrong way, it causes you more pain, more groaning, more time. But you're going to get there. You can't fail a test with God. You just take it over and over and over again. So when you figure that one out, take the test, move forward, and be much happier. A hope, expecting something good to happen. Amen. That's like, oh, is that? <laughs> that is hope. Uh, what is that? Absolutely. I mean, it's just such a beautiful thing to know. And when it's in you, you follow it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Colossians 1, 10 through 12. Oh, yeah. So that you may live a life worthy of the oh, Lord yeah. and please him in every way. Oh, yeah. Bearing fruit in every good work. Growing yeah. in the knowledge of God. Being strengthened with all the power of your glorious might. So that you may have great endurance and patience. And giving joyful thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light. Okay, now on earth, when we think of inheritance, when my parents die, I get all this. Well, sometimes the inheritance isn't profitable. Sometimes the inheritance is actually bills and a mess to clean up and all kinds of things that are not going to be what you know what you have to do. Yeah. You also have to give things up in life to, to get through them. Give up the earthly things to follow the spiritual things. That's just sometimes, but I really like this. Well, you're going to get so much more that you're going to like even better, and then you may have to give those up too. God doesn't give you anything to give up that you can't do without. People go as far as donating kidneys to total strangers. Who really wants to give up organs of their body? And you're going to have some serious pain after that. But when you get done with the pain and the healing, you have the Lord in, say, in there saying, I'm well pleased with you, my son, my daughter. The inheritance of what you're giving somebody else, the Lord gave you to be able to give. We never would have thought how many years ago that you can share parts of your body with people. Skin, bone, eyes, you know, there's a lot of it. We have it to share. Jesus gave his whole life for us. For us to save a life, it's going to go some days. But, you know, I don't know if I'm holding the angle here, but being strengthened with the Lord is the one way to get through all the groaning and the pain and all the things in life that are not what you expect. How many times do you expect something good to happen? Less often than you think something bad or awful is going to happen. Ugh. I'm going to have to do that again. What next? How often have you heard somebody say, what next? I can't take another one of those days. I can't do it anymore. It's supposed to be, I'm hopeful because the next day is going to be better. I'm glad we got through that because I know there's something from it. Not, it's, it's not to be groaning in, it's supposed to be growing in. So the painful decisions we make, it only comes out ahead for us later. Because God is sitting there just waiting. Father, we thank you for the word that you provide for us. How it feeds us and gives us what you need each one of us to know. It is not my place feed them what you need them to know. It is my place to share your word. 
for you to feed all of us. And we thank you for all that you do for us, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. And if you ever have prayer requests, you can always ask. We'll be here for that at all times as well. You can call the church also. And this morning we're going to have communion. <coughs> from the Lord what I also pass on to you. The Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks, he said given thanks he broke it and said this is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Thank you Jesus. same way after supper he took the cup saying this cup is the new covenant of my blood this is his new contract his new promise do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me for wherever you eat this bread and drink this cup you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes from it thank you Jesus And as I was saying, if you ever have prayer requests, you can always come to the church Tuesday through Friday, 10 to 2. You can email the church, churchofgodsword at outlook.com. You can call 701-639-6240. You can be here and ask for a side prayer. Everybody needs a prayer. And if you find that you have somebody who is strong in the faith, reach out to them. If you're in a church, just make sure it's Bible-based. That is, God's Word is the church that you're supposed to be with, to save, to teach, to grow. It is an imperative thing that we follow God's Word, and that's where the Bible is. And thank you, Father, for all that you do for us. Jesus' name, amen. And we have a song for the Father's today. 